Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. Martin. Folks, they are searching for Amber Evans, a well-known community activist. She has been missing for a week. Her car was found abandoned. Friends say she would not take off like this without telling friends or family. She's been a key organizer of protest at Columbus City Hall and heavily involved with the People's Justice Project and the Juvenile Justice Coalition. Joining us now to talk about this case and the way mainstream media ignores the missing black people, especially black women, is Derricka Wilson, CEO of Black and Missing Foundation. Derricka, I don't see this woman's story on CNN, on MSNBC, on Fox. I don't see it. Uh, she's been missing for a week. Right. A female activist. Mm-hmm. Our stories are unworthy with the mainstream media. You know, the decision makers in the newsrooms, they don't look like us. And we struggle with stories such as Amber's story and so many other Amber Evans out there. You know, here's a lady that's missing a week. Family don't know where she is, well known in the community, and no one's looking for her. Have you been in touch with folks down there? But what kind of support do they need? I mean, what, 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 you know, what does the search look like? What's going on? There's not much efforts besides her family, her friends, you know, doing the searching. We need coverage because she can be anywhere. I know that her car was found. Her car was found in a location where she would typically go um, to clear her head. She had just gotten into an altercation with her boyfriend. And so, you know, there is also that correlation between missing persons and domestic violence. Right. You know, I would love to know what the efforts are for the, the Ohio Police Department as far as their interviewing with the boyfriend to try to get more information. This woman did not just fall off the face of this earth. Um, Joe, you got a question? No, I, I was thinking about your, the newly elected governor of Ohio, DeWine, who tries to be a compassionate Republican. Uh, he definitely should be uh, challenged. The, the, uh, the, the state troopers ought to be uh, challenged on this one. And, uh, you know, Roland, um, we all should be on on this case. What tends to happen is, you know, wealthy white people, you know what the first thing they do? They hire private investigators and they hire public relation firms. And you know how that worked when you were at CNN. Yep. And they can then get that kind of, uh, that kind of attention. But, but even you if, you, even if you're white and wealthy, as you, long as you're white, yeah. And, but and and they hire those firms. We we don't have the resources no. to we, do that. No, we don't. But not some of them don't hire. It's the law enforcement that always also bring in well, the true, FBI too. too. Right. Yeah. So with our cases, they're not even bringing in the FBI. So you're absolutely right. Some of the families hire, but then law enforcement they don't really take our cases serious. Um, you know, they will quickly ask for additional resources with the FBI. And of course, when they get involved, you see it all over the yeah. the national and, news. And, and I think this is where, once again, I, I'm one of these people, I believe you go to the top. Well, and, and you go to Absolutely. the governor who just got elected, you know, he had a pretty good percentage of, of African American votes. It shouldn't make any difference. This, this, this should transcend race. This is someone's daughter, someone's mother. I think the reality is you take it to the top. Everybody listening should be just blasting the governor's office so that he, tomorrow morning, Gets picks up the phone, calls the the powers to be in Columbus, Columbus, and mm -hmm. and and they deal with this. Maybe the family even need to conduct a, a press conference, you know, in front of the governor's office. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, go and, ahead, Atima and Robert. Go and, ahead. And also, or go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say that it just reminded me, and I can't remember if it was Family Guy or Simpsons or which one. I think it was Family Guy, and there was a clip with the news, and it was like reporting on a girl missing. And her name was Becky. And they were, everybody was like, oh, that's so sad. And it's like, um, her name is uh, Becky Gutierrez. And they're like, oh, that's not news. Like, as they, as they comment on how, uh, you know, women of color, people of color, when they disappear, are, are minimized. And it's like, great, it's like on a national cartoon show. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's an issue that 7% of, I was reading this before,
before I came here, 7% of black women represent the population, but the, we're 35% of missing cases, and we're not taken, it's not taken seriously. And, and also I think this goes to the issue of voices in the media and the African-American community, because often we don't control the editorial boards, we don't control the newsrooms. It's hard to get our stories told by people mm -hmm. who don't have a particular amount yep. of interest in what's going on with us. And if you look at cable news after 6 o'clock, there's very few voices out there who could make this a crusade or... No, not, but it's, no, but, no, but see, this is what the mistake we make. It's not a question of the voices, because those people who are on the air don't control their shows. That's right. That is okay, right. Okay, let's be real clear. That's yeah, right. Be real just, clear. The executives yep. determine what those rundowns are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right? Now, now that's... I'm sorry, and I'm not going to let us off the hook. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Man, if this were Beyonce or some other... You know, look what happened, like, with the Super Bowl and how all of that blew up. It, we have to have the same urgency with, and use this effectively because we can't keep, we, we all have agreed, we can't depend on the executives in the newsroom. They don't look like us. Yep. They're firing people left and right. Who look like us. <laughs> so, yeah. so the reality is that I don't want to, I, I think, I think people, I, you know, you think of the tens of thousands that are watching this show right now, and you let the governor or the mayor of Columbus uh, get uh, 2,000, 3,000 hits, phone calls, uh, something's going to happen. Oh, absolutely. You know, when we started the organization 10 years ago, missing persons in the United States, African Americans represented 30 percent. Mm -hmm. That number has increased to 40 percent. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a epidemic that's happening here, and we really need to we need to get more diversity. We need to get more training for law enforcement, because I'm a former cop, and I do recall when I was in the police academy, we only spent, in, out of six months, we spent an hour <coughs> on missing person cases, mm -hmm. because it's not considered a priority. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, here's the deal, just so, well, first of all, I, don't, I mean, so y'all probably were sitting there like, okay, uh, why is he over tip -top texting on his phone? I, mm -hmm. See, I don't waste time right. when it comes <laughs> to this. So just so y'all know, Okay, uh, I just sent a text message to the former mayor of Columbus, Michael Coleman, who's a brother. Uh, I sent a text message to Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio. Sent a text message to Congresswoman Marsha Fudge of Ohio. Then also Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, who represents Columbus, Columbus right? uh, in Ohio. So I'll let y'all know what they hit me back with. Uh, so just so y'all know, because see, I don't, I, don't, I don't sit here and just waste time. Uh, so I'll let y'all know, follow me on social media, what they say. Uh, but I'd be damned uh, if you're going to have this sister who's an activist missing and you're not going to have uh, any coverage uh, that's taking place. Uh, and, yeah, I'll also be jamming up all these cable networks. And just so you all also understand, I'm not going to sit here and just hit them on Twitter. Jeff Zucker, I'm sending you an email. Phil Griffin and Miss NBC, I'm sending you an email. And also Suzanne Scott, CEO of Fox News, I'm sending you an email as well, just so you all know. Anybody else? I'll do the same. Everybody. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely everybody. All right, then. Derek, I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank so you. folks, how can they reach your organization? Uh, reach us on um, online, uh, bamfi.org, or on Facebook, Twitter, we're Black and Missing Foundation. And can you put the, the, the mayor's information and the governor's information? Yeah, the phone numbers and emails. All phone numbers, emails, yeah. that, that type of thing. Yes, okay. we, we are using our platform. We have the information about Amber on our Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of those platforms. So we're circulating it and using all of our partnerships and platforms to get the message out there. All right, we really appreciate it. Thank you so very much, Thank folks. Real you. quick. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark video in just one moment. Now, calling all HBCU alumni, students, and leaders, you can enter the Ford Motor Company HBCU Mobility Challenge and win 25000 bucks for your school. Building on their long-term support of HBCUs, Ford is looking to improve mobility in HBCU communities through innovative solutions. Now, the winning program will receive a grant of up to $25,000 to implement their proposal. And the deadline to apply is March 31st, 2019. Now, we want you to go to fgb.life. That's fgb.life for more info and to apply. It should be a of course, you see right there, fgb.life. Okay, now Ford goes further in our community. So again, you can pick up $25,000. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.